sorrow on houses on clothes on buying and selling on crime and punishment on laws on freedom on reason and passion on pain on self-knowledge on teaching on friendship on talking on time on good and evil on prayer on pleasure on beauty on religion on death the farewell so I think I'm not gonna read like the whole book I think you know we'll just go through and read different passages let's see wow these pages are really old <laughs> said a rich man speak to us of giving and he answered you give but little when you give of your possessions it is when you give of yourself that you truly give for what are your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow and tomorrow what shall tomorrow bring to the overpundent dog burying bones in the tackless sand as he follows the pilgrims to the holy city. And what is fear of need but need itself? Is not dread of thirst when your well is full, the thirst that is unquenchable? There are those who give little of the much which may have and they give it for recognition and hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome and there are those who have little and give it all there are the believers in life and the bounty of life and the coffer is never empty there are those who give with joy and that joy is their reward and there are those who give with pain, and that pain is their baptism. And there are those who give and know, not pain is giving, nor do they seek joy, nor give with mindfulness of virtue. They give, as in your yonder valley, the myrtle breathes its fragrance into space. Through the hands of such as these, God speaks, and from behind their eyes, he smiles upon the earth. It is well to give when asked, but it is better to give unasked through understanding and to the open-handed the search for one who shall receive is joy greater than given. And is there aught you would withhold all you have shall some day be given. Therefore give now, and that the season of giving may be yours, and not your inheritors. You often say, I would give, but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchard say not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. Surely he is who is worthy to receive his days and nights as worthy of all the else from you. And he who has deserved to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. And what desert greater shall there be than that which lies in the current.
courage and the confidence, nay, the charity of receiving. And who are you that men should read? Their bosom and unveil their pride, that you may see their worth naked and their pride unbashed. See first that you yourself deserve to be a giver and an instrument of giving. For in truth it is in life that gives unto life, while you who deem yourself a giver are but a witness. And you receivers, and you are all receivers, assume no weight of gratitude, lest you lay a yoke upon yourself and upon him who gives. Rather, rise together with the giver on his gifts as on wings, for to be overmindful of your debt is to doubt his generosity. Who has the free hearted earth for mother and God for father? said, Speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, Your joy is your sorrow unmasked, and the selfsame well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow cars into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in. into one 
voice and melody, but how shall I, unless you yourselves be also the peacemakers, nay, the lovers of all your elements? Your reason and your passion are the rudder and the sails of your seafaring soul. If either your sails or your rudder be broken, you can but toss and drift, or else be held at a standstill in mid-seas. For reason, ruling alone is a force confining, and passion unattended is a flame that burns to its own destruction. Therefore, let your soul exalt your reason to the height of passion that it may sing, and let it direct your passion with reason that your passion may live through its own daily resurrection and, like the phoenix, rise above its own ashes. I would have you consider your judgment and your appetite even as you would two loved guests in your house. Surely you would not honor one guest above the other, for he who is more mindful of one loses the love and the faith of both. Among the hills, when you sit in the cool shade of the white poplars, sharing the peace and the serenity of the distant fields and meadows, then let your heart say in silence, God rests in reason. And when the storm comes and the mighty wind shakes the forest, and thunder and lightning proclaim the majesty of the sky. Then let your heart say in awe, God moves in passion. And since you are a breath in God's sphere and a leaf in God's forest, you too should rest in reason and move in passion.
scholar said, speak of talking. And he answered, saying, you talk when you cease to be at peace with your thoughts, and when you can no longer dwell in the solitude of your heart, you live in your lips. And sound is a diversion and a pastime, and in much of your talking, thinking is half murdered. For thought is a bird of space that in a cage of words may indeed unfold its wings but cannot fly. There are those among you who seek the talkative through fear of being alone. The silence of aloneness reveals to their eyes their naked selves and they would escape. And there are those who talk and without knowledge or forethought reveal a truth which they themselves do not understand. And there are those who have the truth within them, but they tell it not in words. In the bosom of such as these the spirit dwells in rhythmic silence when you meet your friend on the roadside or in the marketplace. Let the spirit in you move your lips and direct your tongue. Let the voice within you voice speak to the ear of his ear, for his soul will keep the truth of your heart as the taste of the wine is remembered when the color is forgotten and the vessel is no more. said, speak to us of self-knowledge. And he answered, saying, your hearts know in silence and secrets of the days and the nights, but your ears thirst for the sound of your heart's knowledge. You would know in words that which you have always known in thought. You would touch with your fingers the naked body of your dreams. And it is well you should. The hidden wellspring of your soul must needs rise and run murmuring to the sea. And the treasure of your infinite depths would be revealed to your eyes. But let there be no scales to weigh your unknown treasure. And seek not the depths of your knowledge with staff or sounding line, for self is a sea boundless and measureless. Say not, I have found the truth, but rather I have found a truth. Say not, I have found the path of the soul. Say rather, I have met the soul walking upon my path, for the soul walks upon all paths. The soul walks not upon a line, neither does it grow like a reed. The soul unfolds itself like a lotus, 